Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're on the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Colin Dixon's on the hooks. I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's a C and Z up on your radio. And now three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we here. Know your numbers. What do we mean by that? Well, you have to know what you want, and you have to know what makes sense for you to get. So you have to know those numbers. Let me get into this. If you know your numbers, you just have to know at the end of the day, what do I want? You ask yourself right now, what do I want? So when working with Mr. Canbar and Sky Vodka, I was thinking, I would like free office space in downtown Tulsa. Free office space for free? Yeah, I wanted free office space. Well, why did I want free office space? I wanted it because I was currently paying about $5,000 a month for office space, and I wanted free office space in exchange for the marketing, the PR, the web development. And so my thought is he was currently paying a certain amount. So he was currently paying, let's say, this amount, right? He's currently paying this amount. And I thought, well, if I can come in here and say, you don't have to pay me, you just pay me commission only, and all you have to do for me is you have to give me this, this commission here, and you have to give me free space, which was currently vacant anyway. I thought that is a win-win. But I knew at the end of the day, when we finished talking, negotiating, marinating, going to the Summit Club and having uh, lots of gluten, we had a lot of bread, a lot of times we were negotiating and meat for a lot of meals, a lot of salad, um, I knew that at the end of the day, I wanted to have free office space. So you have to know what it is that you want. The other thing is you have to know the dollars and cents. You have to know the math. You gotta look at it, you gotta say, okay, and, I'm, and again, these numbers aren't accurate and because of just the you know, confidential nature of certain deals, I'm not gonna give you specifics on this, but I'm just trying to help you with this example. But let's pretend, and this, wasn't, this isn't a real number, but let's pretend that, let's say that the other guys, in this case, uh, the, the, the Canbar properties, let's say, that they were spending, let's say, $20,000 a month on PR, marketing, real estate, et cetera. And let's say that the space I wanted would cost $5,000 a month, and then everything else I would do for free. Whatever the numbers were, I knew the numbers, and I knew that it was a no-brainer. It was like a deal of like, what's, I don't know, should we dramatically reduce all of our costs and then give away free space? Uh, makes sense. I wanted to have that kind of deal where it's a no-brainer, where you could be, if, you're, if your mind was just firing and your, 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 your synapses were just firing at a rate that was like a tenth of the speed of a normal human brain, and your mind was not very intelligent, not very evolved, you could look at the deal and go, that makes sense. It's a no-brainer. It's a win-win. So back to you. Awesome. So step number three, know your numbers. Not just what you want, but also the dollars and cents behind it. Um, step number four, okay, we're talking about contract negotiation, seek a win-win, and you were kind of moving into that. So, so we're talking about negotiation. We have the definition of negotiate, okay? Yeah. So I'm gonna set this up for you. What does negotiate mean? It means to discuss something formally in order to make an agreement. Also, uh, there's another definition to, to say to get over, through, or around something successfully. Clay, what does it mean to seek a win-win? Well, let me get into this for you. Um, a lot of people, when they negotiate, if this is where we're headed, as Webster talks about, the goal is we're trying to reach an agreement, right? Or we're trying to get past, let's pretend there's like a tree in the way, you know, we're trying to work our way around, you know, the obstacle. And if the tree in this case is the obstacle, we're just trying to work our way around that guy, okay? So we're trying to basically get around the obstacle, but we're trying to reach an agreement. That's what we're trying to do. And it, a lot of people, when they negotiate, I don't know what it is. I don't know if, if it's a deal where you feel like you've been taken advantage of in the past. I don't know. But uh, a lot of people, they, they want to do a deal where their, uh, their um, definition of negotiation is where you win and then they lose. 
And that's not a healthy way to go about it. That's not the mindset. Because I'll tell you this, you have LinkedIn, you have Facebook, you have Humans Talk. Rumor has it, humans talk to each other. That's just in black helicopters everywhere. But the point is, the human race is going to talk. And if you go in there and you screw somebody over, they're going to talk about it. If you take advantage of people, they're going to talk about it. Let me just give you an example. I uh, negotiated for the purchase of a Suburban from an anonymous automotive dealership that I will not mention their name, albeit they are very near the and I would never buy from these guys. But the point is, I go in and the guy says, hey, my wife's pregnant, you know, we have five kids, and this is the last time she was pregnant, and, and, and basically, you know, she looks like she's gonna have a baby any moment, they had twins. So it's like almost uncomfortable, where you look away, because you're like, you don't want to see her right before she goes into labor, because then you know you're gonna have to drive this woman you never met to the hospital, that kind of thing. You're like right in that zone. And the guy says, well, I'll tell you what, if you guys will do the deal today, I'll throw in a DVD player, I'll throw in the LCD screen, I'll throw in the, and since we have five kids, you know, uh, my wife's thinking, that's awesome, because we haven't had like a converse, an adult conversation in a car for like, I don't know, a decade. It'd be great if there was a DVD player or something, so we go on road trips that the kids can kind of entertain themselves. So my wife says, well, that sounds good. And the guy goes, all right, well, so here's the deal. We're gonna do it for this amount of dollars, and then we're going to include the DVD player and the LCD screen for you guys. Absolutely. He says, we'll install it. We'll make sure we install it tomorrow. Cool. Well, as soon as we sign the deal, we get the little X on the line. Boop, boop, boop. We sign our name. What he does is he sends me a, a text, which, by the way, is the weakest form of communication in the whole world. It's like a text. It's like, send somebody a text. Hey, hey I'm running late. Hey, hey, I want to screw you over. Hey, I want to you know, not honor my commitment. Hey, I just want to be difficult, but I'm kind of too weak to talk to you verbally. Face to face. Like there's face to face, and then there's like on the phone, and then there's text. I mean, it's 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 the weakest thing you could possibly do, you know. So the guy says, "I'm sorry, but I can't install it tomorrow." So I said, "Okay, well, when can you?" Well, I'd have to get back with you. Then I call him, call him, call him, call him. Well, about the fourth time, homie says, "I am so sorry, we're backed up." And I, I guess when I said we would install it, I didn't know what that meant. We're still gonna have to charge you an install fee. And I'm like, what do you think it meant? And he's like, well, I didn't know there's extra costs and various things. And I said, home, home scale it, here's the deal. My wife's gonna have a baby like any minute, so you need to install this thing. Long story short, uh, they screwed me over, they never honored their commitment, and I've probably told, uh, you know, I don't know, 50 people about how much they're terrible and how much I hope that they fail because they're a freaking disaster. The guy is an idiot and he's the owner who did it. So he made a win-lose and I ultimately had a little litigation involved, a little litigation. That's the one cool thing about having a little success is you can just sue the crap out of people who don't honor their commitments. But I went for it and a homeboy ended up uh, installing our DVD player. So the point is he made a win-lose and he hurt his reputation. He killed countless deals. Now people that take care of me, I refer them. People that take care of you, you refer them too. So you've got to seek a win-win. Do not seek a win-lose. Hopefully that makes sense. If that doesn't, it's probably because I'm, I'm not a, a gifted orator, in which case, uh, just send a com complaint in there and we'll, we'll deal with it. Step number five, allow for wiggle room. Clay, what does that mean? Well, my son, he is uh, rocking that you know, eight years of age deal. And so what you do is his foot, you know, this is his foot, this is a good foot drawing here, you know, he's got a foot and stuff, and his foot with his toe and everything, his foot like grows like, I don't know, like an inch, like an inch every week, you know what I mean? It's like an inch a week. So you buy a shoe for the guy, you say, okay, I'm going to buy a shoe for this guy, and uh, you know, here's his shoe, you know, and little kids, they want to get like a brand they know, like an Adidas or something, you know, they get him a shoe, and that's how it goes. What you want to do is you want to buy a shoe with a little bit of wiggle room because you know he's going to grow. You know what I mean? But I don't do that, apparently. I, I, I uh, just buy shoes that fit. I, I guess I hate money. But the point is, so I buy the shoe, and as soon as I buy the shoe, his foot grows a little bit. It grows by like 2%. Then he's like, Dad, my shoes hurt. Oh, and I'm like, just wear the shoe till you're 35, and we'll be fine. Why can't you just wear a shoe till you're 35? Why do we have to buy a new shoe every week? You know. So my son's now wearing like flip-flops. He's basically barefoot is what we've made him do to cut down on costs. But the point is, we didn't allow any wiggle room when I bought his last pair of shoes. Um, that uh, Idiot of the Week award goes to me, but I bought him a shoe that fit comfortably, not the one that had a wiggle room. And when we negotiate a deal, 
A lot of times we're, it, we only ask for exactly what we want and we don't allow any variance, okay? So let's do an example. Let's say you're gonna go buy a house right now and if the house, if you and your wife are prepared to pay or you and your husband, let's, let's, say, let's say that you wear the pants and you are the wife and you and your husband are gonna go buy a house. He's a stay-at-home dad. Let's get, let's just, let's get, you know, let's, just do, let's, let's flip it for a second. So he's a stay-at-home dad. You talk to him and you say, hey, let's buy this house for 230,000. And that's the most you can pay, period. And you're trying to buy this house, 230. You say, 230 is the most I can do. And the person has their house on sale for like 245. If you say 230 is the most we can do, they're always going to come back and ask you for 235. So they say, no, we want to do 235. Well, here's the deal. If you, if you offered the biggest deal you could do on the first pass, you put yourself in a bad spot. So I'm telling you this, if you're offering to buy something, always offer lower than what you think is reasonable or what you think is uh, you, you want to basically get to a point where at the end of the deal, it's fair, okay? But you have to start offering a little bit lower than what you want to pay because you got to allow that wiggle room. Now, if you're somebody who's selling, tr put the sales price higher than what you want so that way when they negotiate down, it gets to what you do want. you got to think about that ahead of time. Think about what you want and then pump it up a little bit. Example, if you ever noticed like Walmart, every product is on sale. Like I went into, I went into a, a Sprouts, it's an it's a organic uh, grocery store that I love, by the way, and I go in there and I'm noticing like avocados are on sale right now. There's four for five dollars. That's a sweet deal. It says on sale, save money, big money, save money, save money, save big money, big instant savings. I'm thinking, I probably get paid by just going in here. There's so much savings going on. I probably will become a multimillionaire in like a 10 minutes just by, you know, saving all this money. What happens is, though, they always take the, the, the suggested price. If you're going into like a guitar center or, or Target or any company, you notice it says suggested retail price, and it's like, this. D I used to DJ, so this DJ system normally is $2,400. However, with today's green tag special, it's $1,999. The point is, they're, they're, they're doing price elasticity. They're saying price elasticity is the idea. They're saying the price is normally here. However, with the discount, it's here. Marshall, does that whole price elasticity, uh, you talk to the Thrivers every day, does that, that price elasticity uh, idea make sense to you, my friend? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of Thrivers are saying, you know, how do I price my product? How do I do that? Well, if they're always coming in at specifically, like you say, just at what they're expecting and needing to get paid, and they never go above so that they can either discount it or come in uh, you know, with some type of uh, offer or something yeah. like that, then you know, they can actually increase the value of their product. If you think about like, one of my favorite companies is Southwest Airlines. I love those guys. When I get to fly Southwest Airlines, I am excited. Those guys do a very, very good job. Or another company is a Whole Foods that I can think of, and I'll just kind of give you those two. But it seems like every time I go into Whole Foods or SouthwestAirlines.com, Southwest.com, they always have a special. They have some sort of thing. It's some sort of like call-out bubble or something that says special, or it says on sale. You know, it says special sale price. And the thing is, is that a lot of the, the thrivers all across the world we've talked to in every country, it's unbelievable. Um, a lot of us are pricing things at our very, and what we need to, what we need. We're not putting any wiggle room in there. So you're gonna negotiate. That's a little pricing, little bonus lesson for you. Make sure you price things above what you need to actually get. So after negotiation, you get what you have to get. So when we're talking about this wiggle room, how much would you suggest to build in for a contract or a sale price or about how much are we talking here? I'd say 15%. I'd always put in 15%. 15%. One, I mean, one, because I mean, Tim Tebow wore the number 15, and I try to always talk about that, try to weave that in. <laughs> Two, uh, it's Thrive 15. No, but honestly, I, I always throw in 15%, because then you can negotiate down or up, and you end up right about where you want to be, but 15%. In worst case scenario, they just purchase it at that wiggle room price. Exactly, yeah. and I'm telling you this, you've got to do that, because the pri price elasticity, if you have like an elastic, back in the day, I don't know what the deal is right now, but women are wearing a lot of these, uh, what are they wearing? Yoga pants everywhere? Uh, uh, apparently. I go to the airport and it's like the National Yoga Pants Convention. It's like, let's see how many yoga pants we can wear, how much yoga pants we can wear. The point is, you know, back in the day, the old school, we're talking like 99. You know, that kind of 90s when Regulate by Warren the, G used Warren to be out G. there. It just, that was when music was music. 
<laughs> but anyway, the thing was, is that people used to wear sweatpants, mm -hmm. and they had elastic on those things, elastic, you know, so, and the thing is, the idea is, you know, you can probably gain 10 pounds or lose 10 pounds, but you just take that drawstring and you tighten it up, you loosen it out, whatever you want to do, off season, you're, you know, you're, you're kind of, that's getting tight, you know, in season, it's getting loose, but the point is you can adjust that with the drawstring. You know, look at your prices the same way. You've got to be able to allow some in, allow some out. You don't want like a custom tailored fitting suit price where it's just specifically priced. Because if you do, you're putting yourself in a bad spot. That's why Southwest Airlines, go on their website right now. Do it right now. This is homework for you. Go on their website and notice, why do they have certain things on sale? I don't know. If less people want it, if there's less, if there's less need, and there's more supply, then they, they factor su you know, supply and need, and they go up to supply and demand, and they go, well, you know, demand is up here, so there's tons of people that want it, so we should probably charge more. Demand is low, we should buy a discount. Moving into step number six here, and now we're starting to get into some of these super moves, Clay. Yep. So always start the negotiations, okay? So we always want to be the first to uh, move on these negotiations. What do you really mean by that? Well, here's the deal. I'm just being honest with you. This is, this is I mean, I'm, always, I'm always being honest with you. There's, there was, there's never been a time I'm not honest with you. I'm just being overtly transparent in a probably uncomfortable way with you here. We're just trying to really, really help you. But when you're negotiating, if you throw out the first number, for some reason, that number then becomes the number where it's like, uh, we're trying to get somewhere near that number. So as an example, if you're trying to buy this house and you say, okay, I wanna buy this house, and the, ha the person has the sales price, they're saying it's for 245,000 $245, dollarinis. Now I know we have thrivers in Egypt, we have thrivers in Singapore, so that amount might mean nothing to you. But let's just say it's, 245,000 Bitcoin. The point is, it's a currency, it's an amount. So what you do is you go, hey, 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 you know, I don't know whether I feel comfortable at 245, but we're gonna do a little math, a little math. We're gonna take 245, 10% of 245 is what? It's $24,500, right? Whoop. So we're gonna go ahead and take, we're gonna take $36,000 off this price, roughly. That's rough math from a guy who's taken algebra three times. But if you have a calculator right now, do it. And if you don't have a calculator, it means you don't have a phone. And if you don't have a phone, there's bigger issues. But the point is, take $36,000 off this price, roughly, that's what you, what you want to offer. So you'd want to say, I'm going to offer you, homie, $209,000 for this. This is my offer, my original offer. I'm going to offer that, my initial offer. I'm going to offer two hundred nine dollars for the two forty five, dollars roughly. Get out a calculator, do the math yourself, okay? See, I have a big forehead, I don't see a lot of sunlight, I'm not that skilled, but work with me. This is a general number. So you offer 209. Well, then the person's going to counter, the seller is going to, going to counter. Um, so specifically in my own life, I did this on a flip house years ago, and I ended up buying a piece of real estate that was worth about 120 for like 50. Because the guy had the property fully paid off, and I offered an amount that I thought was low, and he said, well, I thought you said 15%. Well, I looked at the disrepair of the property and offered lower, and he was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. I mean, that's bizarre. The point is, offer lower, offer that 15% lower, and that becomes kind of the, the basis. And now we're trying to you know, move off that point. If they make the first offer, now it's a bad deal. So always be the first one to offer. And if you, specifically for our thriver in Staten Island, if you're negotiating with a, a vendor, just tell them, like, this is where we want to be. Bam! Go ahead and make that initial offer. You're setting the tone for the negotiation, and then they can counter off that a little bit. So the person that starts the negotiation is generally, for the most part, going to always control the entire process, is what you're saying. Yeah, it, al it always ends up working out that way. I'm not quite sure what it is. I'm not, it's kind of like, you know, why, back, you know, back in the day when you had Nintendo? Mm -hmm. you ever Nint if you're watching this and you're like 45, you know what I'm talking about. That was a great time in, in American uh, history. That was a great time in Japanese history, too. These guys at Nintendo, they make these games, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't work. So you'd take the game out, you'd take it out as a cartridge. You'd take it out, and you go, mm -hmm. and you blow in the game. You put that beast back in. Bam, you're playing Duck Hunt again. Bam, you're playing Super Mario again. Why does it work? I don't know. Another example. Some of you might have a computer right now. Perhaps you've uh, used a computer. And what will happen is when you're on the computer, your computer will freeze and you're like, what's that all about? Well, it could be, is, it, is, it win, is it Windows? Is it an Apple problem? I don't know. But you just hit that restart button, boom. And sometimes it works. 
So the whole deal right here, this is a deal where I don't understand psychologically why that works, but it does. And I can tell you, I, I saved many hours of time as a kid by just taking out the game, blowing on it, putting it back in, as opposed to you know, looking at the circuitry and trying to figure out how to reprogram my Nintendo, because I didn't know how to do it. So, so don't know why it works, but it definitely works every single time. And, and I just want to... I want to throw in one thing because I don't think the Thrivers get enough Notorious B.I.G. references. Okay. And I know that's something you're into, but Notorious B.I.G., he used to say, Super Nintendo Sega Genesis. Yes. But I was dead broke, man. I couldn't picture this. And I remember relating to that and going, someday I'll have both of those. And I have both of those. We're talking about effective contract negotiations here. So the next move is to put that mess in writing. So uh, we actually want to write down what we're offering here. What, what do you mean by that? Well, what we're talking about here is, is one, I want to dedicate this to John Elway. Um, John, your helicopter Super Bowl dive where you dove into the end zone and you got hit and you spun and you made it in, that was amazing and that's what we cheer for. But anyway, so we're back to this, uh, uh, put that mess in writing. What happens is when you're negotiating, a lot of times you literally have a mess. You literally over here and you feel like you have this very, very clear, you're feeling like you're going, look, I have got a very clear, you're very, I mean, you're like, I've got a very clear understanding of what this deal is. You, you know what this deal is. You're, you're, you're focused, you're locked in. You know what this deal is. You know all the details in your mind. In your mind's eye, in your mind's eye, you can see it clearly. You're like, bam, 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 bam. The problem is, is you're talking to the other party, and the other party, and these are, these are, these are, these are idiots, but this other party, they're kind of going, you know, they're kind of they're kind of doing this deal where they're going, uh, you know, what are what are we talking about here? They're kind of going, I don't quite understand what you're saying, you know. And they're kind of like, well, I think we like these. I'm not sure if this deal is the right make, that makes sense because I don't quite understand what it is that these guys are are saying they want in this deal. So you've got to take the time. So just this morning, true story. This morning at uh, uh, what 4 a.m. There's a professional hockey team that reached out to me, and they want me to do some work for them. And so I sent them a specific line item of the stuff that uh, we do. I mean, I'm, we do this, we do that, we do this. It's, it's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper on a 12 point font, and I bet you I had 25 specific things that we include in writing, and I sent it to them. And that clarity, that clarity is what is going to make the deal happen. But I, here's the thing is, a close cousin, oh boy, uh-oh, uh-oh, this is a bonus for you. A close cousin of dishonesty is casualness. Because casualty, or because casualness, as our Thrive 15 mentor Tim Redmond says, he says, casualness causes casualties. Remember, casualness causes casualties. If you're just talking and you're, you're very loose and it's not written down, I'm just telling you, you're going to cause the other party to go, I, I thought you meant this. And you go, no, no, I, I thought you meant this. And pretty soon now we start to get into that deal where they mistrust you. And if they mistrust you, the deal blows up. You don't want that to happen, okay? So that's, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so you got to get it in writing. Now, Clay, t talk to me about this. You sent over this hockey team a, a line item list, okay, of things. Now, for Thrivers that are doing a lot of negotiations on a uh, regular basis, yep. how is this going to help them speed up that process? Well, I was on the phone the other day with a guy. He uh, um, is a trainer for NBA players. He trains NBA players. And this guy... Uh, you don't. You, you want to put it in writing, okay? You want to talk to someone, but you got, you got to put it in writing. Uh, my main man Moses. I know a lot of us aren't into the. A lot of people aren't into the whole Judeo-Christian worldview thing. But work with me. It's in the Torah, so most religions embrace the first five books of the Bible. Work with me, Moses. He was told to put it on the tablet. Put it on the tablet. Take the vision. Put it on the tablet. Write it down. The Ten Commandments. That's why they're on a tablet as opposed to just in general thoughts. They're written down. The point is. I'm talking to this guy, and he is talking at great length about stories, examples, analogies, and he's just sort of drifting. And it takes 45 minutes, not kidding, to get through the phone call, and you have no idea at any point what he's talking about. Because he's saying stuff like, we're wanting to make a win-win, we're wanting to work with you guys, we're wanting to come together and create this unbelievable experience that pro athletes around the world are going to love. And because of your marketing acumen, we want to bring you on for an equitable percentage of this deal. Now, this equitable percentage could be valued at, and I'm going, whoa, 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 whoa. How much of a percentage are you talking about? 
how much of my time specifically, what specifically do you want? And at which point it's like, well, Clay, the way I look at it is it's like two guys are going into a bar. And one guy is, and you're just getting like this analogy festival, and you have no idea what he's talking about. All I'm saying is you've got to eventually put it on the tablet. You've got to put it in writing. You've got to write it down. That has to happen. That'll help you so much through the negotiation. Step number eight of contract negotiations. Don't freak out. Okay. This is a little bit deep. Um, I hate to do that because I tend to be on the shallow uh, side of the pool in life. Okay, but let me get a little deep here. I'm diving in, deep diving in. Here we go. The word emotion, the word emotion. You've got this E that gets in front of mo the, the motion a lot of times. A lot of times you get this emotion that stops us from the motion. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you a story about what not to do. And I feel... I don't feel bad about it anymore. I felt bad about it for about four years. And then now I, I sort of, it's, it's gone far enough. You know, like if you do weird, weird things when you're, in, when you're in high school or college, and then you're going, well, I was back in high school. Well, that's not, you can't, it's not funny when you're in the principal's office at the time. But then, you know, when you're 30, you're like, yeah, that was hilarious. Well, this is what I did. I'm on the phone with a guy doing a negotiation. I did not know what I was doing. And he made a comment that was mean. I was not prepared. I did not get ready for the rude interview, as we talked about earlier. So the guy says, uh, frankly, I, fa I fail to see the value in what you're offering. And he comes back offering half of what I wanted. And he says, furthermore, I find it to be disconcerting that you have such a hyper-inflated version of your value. Your value is, 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 is small at best. And I remember going... Oh, oh, so you want to fight. You know, like the whole like Bruce Lee, like, like a Chuck Norris movie. You know what I mean? I started to get into that whole Chuck Norris technology where I'm going, and I'm on the phone on my conference call. And I remember my partner, he's next to me, and I'm on the conference call. And I said, can you clarify what you mean? And he comes back, and I remember like it was yesterday, and he goes, I'm saying that I have never seen a more pathetic offering than the one you've presented today. And so what I did was something that you don't do, but I'm telling you because I want to help you. Mentorship, you learn from mentors or mistakes. You learn from mentors or mistakes. So work with me here. And don't mock me. Don't send in all these emails to our customer service team about this. Just work with me, okay? I'm just it's a confession here. I said to the guy, I said, so what did you say about your mother? And I said it on the conference call. And the guy said, I was now getting as far enough back that it's funny, but it just started getting funny. But I, and he goes, excuse me? And I said, I just wanted to know what you said about your mother, because I thought you said something about your mother, and it wasn't very nice, but I agree. And he goes, excuse me? I, I don't remember what you said about your mother, but I tend to agree with what you said about your mother. And he said, what? And I, I, I would never have said that, but that was a pretty low blow, but I agree, because I think the same way about her, frankly. And he was like, what? And the conversation just got nasty. I ended up finding myself in litigation. It was awesome. So if we're, depositions are done now. We're out of that. But I'm just telling you, like, you'd never want to reference someone's mother. That's like a, that's like a, that is the worst thing you could do. And I don't know why I immediately went into that. It's probably that kind of, you know, growing up without financial means, kind of that young Eminem, Wu-Tang Clan fan, fan, fan. I kind of, I went back into that Eminem, you know, lose yourself moment where I thought I was battling on the microphone, but I ended up just battling via legal bills and it was not good. So point is, don't get emotional because I promise you negotiation, people will say things. You're trying to sell a house, they're going to rip on your house. If you're trying to sell a business, they will rip on your business. If you're talking about your don't and just do not get emotional here. Leave the emotion out of the contract negotiation. So for the thrivers that are doing this on a regular basis, what should they be focusing on? What, if they're in the trenches, what do they need to be focusing on? Yeah, what I do is I sort of now have a given where I say over here is all this emotion. This is all, I mean, this is stuff, and it, it, people are gonna say horrible things to you. People are gonna be mean to you. They're gonna be just, er, they're gonna be mean. They're gonna be negative. And I just don't put any energy into it. And then over here, this is sort of happiness. These are benefits. These are facts. These are actual numbers. This is just, ah. And I just stay over there. I stay positive. It's kind of like, you know, being a homer for uh, Tom Brady. I tend to wear Tom Brady jerseys when I'm traveling, which is 
hilarious, but I wear a number. I don't know if you've seen this happen. Yeah. I'll wear the number 12, Tom Brady, and people are like, yeah, you, you, how, how's the deflating going? <laughs> yeah, hey, 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 Tom, did you def can you deflate this? Or, hey, how's your guy? Is he, go is he, you know, tough time to be a Pats fan, hey, you know, or, hey, cheat gate, you know what I'm saying? You're doing a little spy gate, little, or they'll go, you know, people are like, oh, I'm sorry, I was just spying on you, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just like, if you like Tom Brady, then it means that people, that aren't, most of the NFL is not going to like you. The point is, when you're negotiating, people are going to be negative. They're just going to attack you. And I'm just telling you, don't be that guy. Don't do it. But they're, they're, they are going to attack you. For somebody that's uh, going to be attacking you, you know it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. For sure. And so for somebody that's attacking you, what, what would you say is your move to kind of get out of that, that negative town, to move back into the positive during that negotiation? It might sound weird, and I don't know whether psychologically this could be proven, but what I do is I'm in, I'm in the situation, so it's me right here versus you know, this person right here. It's me versus that person. And what I do is I remove myself mentally and I move to a position where I'm almost like a satellite looking down on the situation and I look at it kind of from an objective perspective. I try to get up here and look at it as though I'm a neutral party who sees this going on and I start to look, well, why would they have done that? Or what have I done that maybe offended them? And I really try to take a more objective, just a, a third, like a completely unbiased view. And that usually helps me get out of it. And then other things I do is I listen to a lot of John Legend in the morning. Uh, his, his live from United Center is phenomenal. It gets me in a nice therapeutic state. And, I, and I'm not even kidding. This is what I do. I listen to a lot of uh, positive music. I listen to a lot of T.D. Jakes. Because if I'm in a negotiation... I am mad. By 5 o'clock, I am mad. I'm going, I don't tell the other party, but I'm just like, are you kidding me? You'd offer, I, this is stuff I say in my Hummer. I'm, I'm driving around town in the Hummer of love, driving home, and I'm driving there, I'm in the car, and I literally am just going, I can't believe they said that. What? That's asinine. That's crazy. Yeah, And I let it go because I'm not going to say that to the other party. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, I listen to my T.D. Jakes in the morning. I get myself re-energized. I come back, and I'm like, so uh, I got your offer this morning in the email, and I wanted to talk with you about it, and, and I kind of go into my inner Joel Osteen moment there. So, step number nine, nine of seventeen. We're at nine of seventeen here. Ooh um, so don't get stuck. Yeah. Every time there's a contract negotiation, there one party is going to want to just grind it to a halt here. So uh, don't get stuck. What what does don't get stuck mean? How do you how do you avoid getting stuck? Well. I'm a, I'm a closer, and if there's things that I'm really good at, it's closing, and there's things that I'm probably not good at, and that's algebra. But closing, what you want to do is you, you just have to realize you can't emotionally get to a dead point. So as an example, I'm just throwing this out here for you. Um, and I always try to give you free dating tips, too, because I've been married 14 years, and my wife is much more attractive than I deserve, and it's just sort of that, just like a bonus tip here for you. But if you're dating somebody, and you're, you're dating, and let's just say that you're a, a man-bear pig, and I think most of us men, we're, we're man-bear pigs. And I know it's kind of a hard thing, but you've got, you know, we're kind of, this is, this is us, we're, we're out there, you know, we're trying to date, you know, people, we've got kind of a pig face, you know, and kind of a hairy, you know, kind of a man-bear pig thing, you know, we're running around. Anyway, when we're out there dating, we have to realize that, like, the other side is looking at us going, you smell like a pig, you look like a bear, and you're trying to pursue me. Why would I possibly want to spend my lifetime with you? I mean, that's how men, we're, we're, we're ugly beings. We're chasing the, the beautiful females around. What are we doing? And the thing is, we have got to make a situation here where we give them an unbelievable amount of value. We've got to say, hey, I'm going to take you to the Olive Garden. The uh, Olive Garden. And they go, really? And you go, yeah, I'm taking the Olive Garden. And then you show up, and you don't take them to the Olive Garden. No, 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 you don't. Because you take them to a place that's a nicer, reservation-only place. And they go, bing, wow, exclamation point, win for you. Then you say, hey, I'm going to take you to a movie. And as a guy, you know what I'm saying. You want to take her to a movie, like a Schwarzenegger movie, a movie where a lot of stuff blows up, or a Sandler movie. You say, I'm taking you to a movie. And then she shows, she says, oh, my gosh, I'm going to a movie. And you say, oh, you are going to a movie. And she says, she tells her friends, he's taking me to a movie in Olive Garden. But you don't take her to, to the movie. No, no, you take her to the theater. 
Why? Because you are a stereotypical male and you don't want to go to the theater. And by taking her to the theater, you have taken so much Red Bull, you're not going to fall asleep either. You're excited to be there. You have had a life coach coaching you about the nuances of theater. Oh, yes, you didn't take her to the Olive Garden. You took her to the nice place. And you didn't take her to the movie. You took her to the theater. The point is, you really, really, really want to go that, that extra mile to wow her. Because if you just say, hey, hey, I'll pick you up at 7 p.m., okay? I'll pick you up at 7 p.m. And if you have the audacity to not show up at 6.50 to wow her with flowers, the deal's going to get stuck. Because she's going to look at the package. She's going to look at the deal. She's going to look at you and go, you smell like a pig. You look like a bear. You know, the bear's got the big bear guts. You know what I'm saying? Big bear guts. You're, you, you're not that great of a deal. You don't, you know, you, you're not that intellectually stimulating. You don't know a lot about the arts. You smell like a pig. You look like a bear. I think we're going to stop negotiations. But no, if you show up at 6.50 for the 7 o'clock date, you tell her off guard, but you take her out to the, to the place of reservations, and you're supposed to take her to the movie, but you take her to the theater instead, you're going to wow that lady. And when you wow that lady, you can ask her dad, and hopefully her dad is at a point of emotional weakness, and he will endorse you, and then you will propose, and it will happen. But the thing is, my friends, is that when you're doing a negotiation with people, you've got to try to wow the other party. And it's going to get to a point where the deal's kind of stuck. And if you're smart, you're going to understand that the emotions, look at this, is, is like a big ball. Remember Indiana Jones? And I know, I know I'm like 35, and the problem is when I'm 35, I keep referencing things that are from the 80s. And if you haven't seen it, just YouTube it. But the point is, Indiana Jones, there's this big ball, this big ball, this massive like boulder that for some reason is like, chasing down my man. It's coming after him. And my man's running going, oh no, I wanna. this is how negotiations are. If you are pushing this ball up the hill for the love that is all, for the love of the, all that is good, get it up the hill. Because once it goes up the hill, once it gets to the top and you make a true win-win here, that thing will roll down the hill and the emotional momentum will happen. But if you are just like being ridiculous and, ne and negotiating over stupid points that don't matter, if you haven't done the research and you don't know your numbers and you don't know what you want and you don't know what a win-win looks like, you're going to get this thing stuck and you're pushing up the hill and then you're going to get stuck and it's going to start rolling backwards and now you're being chased by a 10-foot tall massive boulder and that's not good. That's just that's from, a, uh, uh, from a physical health perspective. That's not good to be chased by that kind of a boulder. Back to you. So don't get stuck. Keep that pushing that boulder up the hill. Yep. Now, I've talked to a lot of thrivers. Um, I remember one thriver out in Colorado, and he's saying, okay, so I'm getting to this point where the contract's, eh, it's kind of getting stuck. Mm. Now, his first inclination is, oh, I immediately got to give this person a discount. I got to immediately, yeah. you know, reduce my price. How, how would you say to do that? Is that a good move? Do, do I give anything on the deal? Do they take something out? Do I... You well, know, this how is, should I be doing that? This is why in the deal, you always want to have everything in writing. And you want to have it very detailed. Because then you can say, hey, you know what? If I give in to this concession here, I want you to give in to this concession. If I give up this thing, I want you to give up that thing. Never come down on your price without asking for something else. Okay. So as an example, a friend of mine who is a genius, he bought a house a few years ago, and this was an awesome move. <laughs> he goes in, the house is on sale for $300,000, and he says... I'll buy the house for, you know, 280 and I also want the hot tub, the lawnmower, I want all the stuff in the garage, and the guy's like, you want my mower, all the stuff in the garage, and the hot tub? And he's like, I absolutely do, and I want it for 280 And the guy's like, I'm offering 300 man, you're killing me here, you know? He's the smallest, you're killing me. So he comes back, and he says, fine, fine, I'll keep all the stuff in the garage, but you can take it for 280 And he's like, cool. Because he didn't even want the stuff in the garage. The point is, you have to be asking for some extra things and understanding that. The number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. We are Jared and Jennifer Johnson. We own Platinum Pest and Lawn and are located in Owasso, Oklahoma. And we have been working with Thrive for business coaching for almost a year now. Yeah. So, so what we want to do is we want to share some wins with you guys uh, that, that we've had by working with Thrive. 
Um, first of all, um, we're on the top page of Google now, okay? Um, I just wanna let you know what type of accomplishment this is. Our competition, Orkin, Terminex, they're both $1.3 billion companies. They both have two to 3,000 pages of content um, attached to their website. So to basically go from uh, virtually non-existent on Google to up on the top page is, is really saying something. Um, but that's come by being uh, diligent to the systems that, that Thrive has, um, by, be, by uh, being consistent and diligent on, on doing podcasts um, and staying on top of those podcasts um, to really help uh, with, with getting up on uh, uh, with their listing and ranking there with Google. And also, we've been um, trying to get Google reviews, you know, asking our customers for reviews. And now we're the highest rated and most reviewed pest salon company in the Tulsa area. And that's really helped with our conversion rate. And the number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. Wait, say, say that again. How much are we up? 411%. Okay. So 411% um, we're up with, with our new customers. Amazing. Right. right. So not only do we have more customers calling in, we're able to close those deals at a much higher rate than we were before. Right now, our closing rate is about 85%, and that's largely uh, due to, uh, first of all, like our Google reviews that we've gotten people really see that our customers are happy, but also we have a script that we follow. And so when customers call in, they get all the information that they need. Uh, that script has been refined time and time again. Uh, it wasn't a one and done deal. We, it was a system that we, that we followed with Thrive in, in the refining process. And that has obviously, um, the 411% shows that that, that that system works. Yeah, so here's a big one for you. So last week alone, our booking percentage was 91%. We actually booked more deals, more new customers last year than we did the first five months, or I'm sorry, the first, we, we booked more deals last week than we did the first five months of last year from before we, we, we worked with Thrive. So again, we booked more deals last week than the first five months of last year. And it's incredible. But, but the reason why we have that success is by implementing uh, the systems that, that Thrive has taught us and, and, and helped us out with. So. Some of those systems that we've implemented are group interviews. That way we've really been able to uh, come up with a really great team. Um, we've created and implemented checklists. That way everything um, gets done and it gets done right. Uh, we, it creates accountability. Uh, we're able to make sure that everything uh, gets done properly, both out in the field and also in our office. Um, and also doing the podcast, like Jared had mentioned, that has really, really contributed to our success. But that, like you said, the diligence and um, consistency in doing those in that system has really, um, really been a, a big blessing in our lives. And also, um, you know, it's really shown that we've gotten the success from following those systems. Yeah. So before working with Thrive, uh, we were basically stuck. Um, really no new growth um, w with our with our business um, and we, we were in a rut and we the, didn't know oh, sorry. the last three years our customer base had pretty much stayed the same we weren't shrinking but we weren't really growing either yeah and so we didn't we didn't really know where to go what to do uh, how to get out of this rut that we're in uh, but Thrive helped us with that you know they, they implemented those systems that they taught us those systems they taught us the knowledge that we needed um, in order to succeed now it's been a grind absolutely it's been a grind this last year um, but we're but we're getting those fruits uh, from from that hard work and, and the diligent effort that, that we're able to put into it. Um, so again, we were in a rut. Thrive helped us get out of that rut. Um, and uh, and if you're thinking about um, working with, with, with Thrive, quit thinking about it and just do it. Um, do the action, um, and you'll get the results. It, it will take hard work and discipline, um, but but uh, but that's what it's going to take in order to in order to, to really succeed. So uh, we just want to give a big shout out to Thrive, a big thank you out there to, to Thrive. We wouldn't be where we at, where we're at now um, without their help. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Moore. I'm a pediatric dentist. Through our new digital marketing plan, we have seen a marked increase in the number of new patients that we're seeing every month, year over year. One month, for example, we went from 110 new patients the previous year to over 180 new patients um, in the same month. And overall, our average is running about 40 to 42 percent increase month over month, year over year. The group of people required to implement our new digital marketing plan is immense, starting with a business coach, videographers, photographers, web designers. Back when I graduated dental school in 1985, nobody advertised. The only marketing that was ethically allowed in everybody's eyes was mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing. By choosing to use the services, you're choosing to use a proven turnkey marketing and coaching system. 
that will grow your practice and get you the results that you're looking for. I went to the University of Oklahoma College of Dentistry, graduated in 1983, and then I did my pediatric dental residency at Baylor College of Dentistry from 1983 to 1985. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I want to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy is just amazing. He's, he's This kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours on the day to day he does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies he's at the top he has a team of uh, business coaches videographers and graphic designers and web developers and they run 160 companies every single week so think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies so in the weekly he's running 160 companies um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up and he teaches people a 13-step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building it into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like, Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and, and that's what I like him most about him. He's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down. Um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't, his highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've gotten nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or uh, you know, navigating competition and, 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 and an economy that's like, I remember we got closed down for three months. He helped us navigate on how to stay open, how to, how to get back open, how to um, uh, just survive through all the COVID shutdowns, lockdowns. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine and we just wanna give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark. Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just wanna say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys, we appreciate you and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house, right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. As you can see, it's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing. And this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing. And this is our new team. We went from four to 14 and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman. So we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grossed 13 grand for the whole month. 
Uh, right now it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month and uh, we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. Whoa. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the world's highest rated and most reviewed business workshops because we teach you what you need to know to grow. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, and I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever. And we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. And now you may be thinking, what does it actually cost to attend an in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop? Well, good news. The tickets are $250 or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes, they're $250 or whatever price you can afford. I grew up without money, and I know what it's like to live without money. So if you're out there today and you want to attend our in-person two-day interactive business workshop, all you got to do is go to thrivetimeshow.com to request those tickets. And if you can't afford $250, we have scholarship pricing available to make it affordable for you.